This is Twit. Um, the big one, of course, is well, all well, uh, Intel and AMD both announced new you know PC chipsets. NVIDIA announced uh, some new GPUs. Um, the Intel stuff is a little confusing. I mean, if you go back, uh, I don't know, mid-December when we talked about Meteor Lake and the Intel announcement, um, I said at the time, I talked to a buddy from Intel and he was like, you know, this is years different. We're doing Meteor Lake laptop only. There's not going to be a desktop version of the chip. Uh, we will realign next fall. And so for 15th gen, you know, we'll do it in the normal order and there'll be both. Great. And then Intel announced new uh, 14th gen uh, desktop chips. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> and this is what's happening. Those are not ultra core. Those are core. They don't have the MPUs. And they also don't have our graphics, right? Which is a significant step up from the uh, Iris XE graphics, which that brand they, they've actually given up on. They don't talk about that anymore. It's just Intel integrated graphics. So there are, I guess the way to think of it is the 14th gen has been forked. So there's core, as there has been for many, many years now, which comes in both desktop and mobile variants. They both announced at CES. And then there's this Meteor Lake variant that has uh, the MPU and also the Intel art graphics. I, I didn't, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know. No, I do know. I'm sorry. Um, the, the 14th gen non-ultra chips are just the same architecture they've had for the past, actually three generations, right? So um, it is a minor upgrade over the 13th gen chipset. It's kind of a placeholder in some ways. I don't really see these as being a big deal. And I, I, I said this to Brad this morning, but the other morning I walked by a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop that I actually have to reset and send back to them. And I, I reviewed that, I don't know, sometime in December, I guess. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, this is the, the, the end of the line, right? We're not going to see these non NPU, non AI PCs anymore, but I guess we are right. Because Intel's still doing these non NPU chips. I, I, I think one of the, we'll talk about this in a little more detail in a bit, but one of the weird things right now is we're in such a transition phase that there aren't really a lot of great AI applications. And I, I say that I don't mean like apps literally, but ways in which you can use AI locally on a PC. It's kind of a thin you know, area right now. I think that is going to change, but I still would not buy a PC now without getting an AI chip in it. I, if I was buying a brand new PC right now, I would never consider a non ultra core or it's equivalent. Right. And when you're saying PC, you're really only thinking laptop, right? Like, well, I, right now I have to mean that because there is no version of a desktop PC with that integrated in. Although mm -hmm. I, I, I've been talking about this for a while without having ever seen one, but Intel does have an architecture where you can plug in an MPU. Yeah. Um, well, and I, and I bring that up for exactly that reason is I'm, I'm, because I'm trying to do image recognition on small form factor stuff for the house. I'm actually mm -hmm. trying to identify the animals. Okay. Uh, I can, there's a few different variations of TPUs that are on a uh, small PCI bus and M2. Huh. Okay. And right. So, okay. There you go. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I, I, Brad asked me about, the, is it like PCI express? Is it M M2? Like I actually don't know, but the it's PC all, you have it's all of these above and there's also a USB version, but they, it's a little okay. bit bandwidth constraint. Well, I, since to. we're talking about this real quick, one of the things that's kind of interesting about this to me right now is that because there haven't been that many MPUs out in the world in the PC mm -hmm. space, right? Qualcomm has had them for a few years, but nobody really buys those computers. Um, none of the local AI type apps are really designed for that. They're nice. designed right. right off of GPUs. And one of the interesting side effects of NVIDIA's kind of dominance of this space is that uh, not only are they now starting, and that's part of their announcement this week, they're really... Uh, they're starting to put these beefy GPUs for PCs that are optimized not for games, although they're great for games. <laughs> they're optimized for AI based on the years of experience they've had coming from these companies coming and say, look, this is what we need. This is what we need. This is what we need. Um, these apps are all uh, optimized for the hardware as well. So GPUs right now actually have kind of an interesting leg up on uh, MPU as, as far as just hardware accelerated AI workloads i guess well, the sure original scalar processor like there's always been an argument about why are we bothering making something new and we've solved this with the gpu so i don't know if you've seen them in nvidia <laughs> it oh, yeah, like no, this. Yeah. and that, well, that might be why so i, I and it can warm the, the house right it's yeah, a double so, wide full length <laughs> pci card with three fans on it and it's yeah. not enough you you have surely noticed this surely on your mm -hmm. computer uh because <laughs> you have an mpu in your um, uh, your surface Mm -hmm. that 
the only kind of mainstream application for it right now, and it's built into Windows, is this Windows Studio Effects thing, right? Yeah. And this is just all the stuff we're all, it's all very common across all of our um, Teams and Zooms, you know, Zoom type apps where, you know, it does background blur or black background replacement. It does, you know, it, your eyes look like they're, you know, moving forward. Even you're always you're, looking at the camera. It, it, yeah. it, you know, it comes with you when you move and all that kind of stuff, right? So, you look at the the Microsoft solution for this, you think, well, what, what do you need an MPU for this for, right? I mean, we already have this stuff, but that stuff relies on, so it's either software-based fully or hits the GPU. It will, you know, depending on what you have, depending on the solution, they'll do what they have to do. But how is that different from a GPU, really? Like it's, because it's kind it's, of the same thing. Really. No, it's literally the same thing. It's just that yeah. the, the, N, the MPUs that were first developed by Qualcomm are were designed for the mobile space, right? That's where they yeah. came from. They came from these very small, low watt devices, and they're just more efficient. So Microsoft wrote their AI product, Windows Studio Effects, to that. And the idea, the thing is, it's not you're not generating an image, something that might take thirty seconds. You're not doing a one off thing. You're in a video call, and you might be, you know, but this call we'll be here for two and a half hours today, right? Uh, I'm not going to blur my background, and and I don't have that here anyway, but. Um, you want so if you're going to be in a call, you want that to be efficient. This is like mm -hmm. a, this is an ongoing workload, right? It's a not it, it doesn't. End, I mean, it does end, but it it's it's not a quick hit. You're done. It's it has to run the whole time. So yeah. that that's the point of it. Um, but yes, I, I this year, you know, Richard made a big point, and he's right. You know, in the sense that 2024 is the the year that AI needs to be implemented. Yeah, there's actually a a nuance to that because it doesn't. It also needs to be optimized for whatever the chipsets are that people have right and uh and i know in the intel ultra core there's a i don't remember the name they use but there's like like an intel ai engine which literally may be the name by the way and it, it it doesn't just mean we use the mpu it means we look at the workload and we route it intelligently through intel arc which is a gpu uh mm -hmm. or uh the mpu uh, whatever that's called um and you know, it's an, it's, it's, it's an intelligent system. Some, the GPU is better, I think for a lot of things right now, because of its, its experience it's been in the market for so long. It's also, and, I also think it's much wider, right? Like the ability to ray trace onto a 4k screen requires yeah. so much more parallel processing than is typically needed for a neural net. I, it's kind of overkill. Not, not a hardware expert, but I believe the MPU, the Intel MPU is two cores. Yeah. <laughs> so not so not yeah. the twelve thousand that's yeah, in my yeah. forty sixty, right? Right. So. Exactly. And and you know, just like processor cores, my God, like even the latest, you know, the ultra core, whatever the, I don't even know the names, whatever the i5, i7, or I guess it would yeah, i5, i7 equivalent. I mean, I think these things are like 16 cores, and they they yeah. don't just have performant and efficient, they have a couple of ultra efficient. Mm -hmm. And that's the little God, my God, 20 years later, Intel's finally paying attention to mobile. <laughs> you know, I love to see it. Um, well, when we're, and I when wonder we're how much anything. of this is all derived from mobile, right? The original tensor out yeah. of the phone. Like every time we describe this, I'm like, this came from a phone. Right. And that's right. why it's so thin and light and, and low power and so forth, because it had to run a phone. This is, uh, you know, I, I, I love and hate Steve Jobs for all the right reasons. But one of the things he I think he got right and, and he had and he had a special way of just communicating it in a very plain English way where normal people would understand it, which is the thing we miss from with him, is that there's a virtuous cycle that occurs. Right. And in his case, what he was referring to is we we had this big unix based computer system and we shrunk it down so it would fit on a phone but we also added all these things to it that were unique and really cool and now we're bringing that stuff back to the mac right so we right. kind of went down to a phone we did the ipad and now we're kind of it now everything benefits from everything it's not just one thing pushing in one direction it's literally you know that virtuous yeah. cycle but it it makes sense that you start with the base set the phone mm -hmm. is the hardest problem if you solve it for the phone it'll work yeah. its way through everything else sure you're just yeah, not so, going to get that 4080 running in a phone. That's not right, a thing. Right. And and that might, I, I still don't, maybe it would just be, maybe it would just look so lackluster by comparison. But if you think, I don't know what a, a mobile GPU looks like, you know, you have a, a, G, a dedicated GPU chipset in your laptop. Obviously it's not a giant card like no, you see in a PC. It's a sock, right? It's, it's just a, a little tin box. Yeah, it's a little thing, but you know, with a lot of pins on it. Yeah, comparatively, it's probably still bigger than the processor and whatever else, but it's still maybe relatively yeah. tiny. So the difference between the CPU, the GPU, and the MPU on a, on a mobile system is probably not dramatic physically. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a desktop computer, the GPU is this thing that's the size of a Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, I don't I think they might just not be ready to have an MPU that can 
uh, exist in that world and make sense. That might be why we're seeing this because knee jerk, my reaction is I don't understand why you would ignore desktop. And I think it's because the people who want this stuff on desktop have already bought really beefy GPUs Yeah, and they're using these they don't really AI scientific work. Well, and and I see no be. reason to get that large. There are little uh, four lane cards, which are probably mm -hmm. enough on PCIe, but the more logical form factor is M2. The yeah, thing you typically right. stick SSDs into, but that is a PCI bus connection and it's that's nice right. and small. And you take a, a, a Google Coral, which oh normally God, the, you interface through a USB port. If you pull that chip out, you can stick it on a, an M2 chassis I, I, and it'll drop in your machine. This has been a theme today. I'm not really good at the details, but I did read in a fascinating article about M2 versus like even the fastest whatever bus like uh, Thunderbolt 4, mm -hmm. whatever they th or they're saying for five USB 4. It is an order of magnitude faster yeah. to go over PCI Express, whatever, the, whatever. Yeah. And a modern and, uh, ATX motherboard has four of them. Yeah. It's Listen, sort of, you don't you need, you get, you can get two terabyte SSDs now. You don't need more storage. Oh my God. Use that I, it, slot for something else. This is like, you know, like Wi-Fi 7, right? F yeah. Fascinating. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Except for there's this thing called Ethernet. And I'm sorry, I don't care how good it is. It's yes. just not on the same page. And that's what PCIe versus USB, Thunderbolt, whatever yeah, it is, right? It's the same it's the, league. It's just not the same thing. It, there's a convenience, you know, to plugging things in and out and all that stuff. But anyhow, so that's where we're at. That's the Intel bit. So uh, to me, that was in the PC space, I, you know, this is a big deal.